Welcome, dear listener, to my spin-off podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Television Reviews. This week, I'll be taking a look at Dempsey and Makepeace, which ran from 1985 until 1986. The action crime drama The Professionals had burst its way into the 1980s, but it came to a halt in 1983. The first ITV show to truly replace it was Dempsey and Makepeace, a lively adventure that played heavily and successfully on the sexual chemistry shared between its two leads, Michael Brandon and Glynis Barber. Brandon is introduced to us as a tough-as-nails New York cop called James Dempsey, and it's quite revealing of the direction this programme would take when we get to see a close-up of Dempsey's 357 Magnum before we first see his face. Whilst working on a major drugs case, Dempsey finds himself forced to kill a bent colleague. Knowing that unsavoury types now want Dempsey dead, his boss O'Grady sends him to London as part of an officer exchange between the two nations. Dempsey finds himself working with an elite undercover police unit called SI-10. He gets partnered with Detective Sergeant Harriet Makepeace, played of course by the gorgeous Glynis Barber, a highly capable officer who had to fight her way through the ranks due to the force's rampant sexism and the fact that she comes from an upper class background. When it comes to bravery, crime fighting technique and resourcefulness, she proved to be at least the equal of her wisecracking American counterpart. There were three series of Dempsey and Makepeace, with a total of 30 episodes. The pilot episode, entitled Armed and Extremely Dangerous, aired on UK television on the 11th of January 1985. The final episode, called Guardian Angel, was broadcast on the 1st of November 1986. The Welsh actor Ray Smith gave a wonderfully no-nonsense performance. He portrayed this chalk and cheese duo's surly boss, Chief Superintendent Gordon Spikings. Antonio Sober, who's best known for playing Jim Jock McLaren in the much-loved sitcom Porridge, appears in the show as the likeable DS, Charles Chaz Jarvis. Chaz usually has to carry out research duties at the SI-10 office, but he occasionally gets thrown into the action. It's a case of pulling out all stops when you're dealing with a daily diet of armed gangs, hitmen, gangsters, drug traffickers and terrorists. Many vehicles and objects end up gloriously trashed in several well choreographed set pieces throughout the series. Roy Allon, listed in the Guinness Book of Records as the world's most prolific stuntman, served as stunt arranger. Coincidentally, it was just two months after the release of Dempsey and Makepeace that Moonlighting arrived on US television. Another mega popular show which teamed up a robust, witty, working class man with a glamorous, sophisticated blonde who moved in higher circles, brought together to solve crimes, whilst simultaneously carrying out a sizzling will they, won't they relationship. The attraction between this program stars was all too real, and they received much unwanted attention from the British tabloid press. However, Glynis Barber and Michael Brandon got married in 1989, and they are still together. I want to watch kept on that embassy day and night. Oh, by the way, any profit you make selling your honourable carnations comes back to me, okay? Harry, Lieutenant Dempsey of the New York Police Department. Lieutenant! Lieutenant! Sergeant Makepeace. Pleased to meet you. Hello again. You heard about Willis? Yeah. 
was all over the bar. Anything helpful? Well, if you'd let me stay Your there... Your cover may have been blown. How? He was tortured. I had to get you out. Can you stop treating me with kid gloves? Every time something Sergeant. gets a bit... Sergeant! Lieutenant Dancy has been seconded to work with us for a while. He knows something about this investigation, so I want you to work together on it. You can also show him how we operate. We might even learn something from his methods. In New York, they think he's hot stuff. Who knows? You might even make a team. Several TV favourites, some little known at the time, appeared in Dempsey and Makepeace, such as Elizabeth Sladen, Christopher Ellison, Tom Georgeson, and Damian Thomas. The show even provided the American glamour of Jules St. John and Susie Quattro. Susie appeared in one of my favourite episodes, entitled Love You to Death, from the second series, in which she portrays a homicidal individual obsessed with Dempsey, thereby making Harriet a target of her rage. Already having six episodes of The Sweeney and five episodes of The Professionals among his writing credits, Dempsey and Makepeace was created by Ranald Graham. Graham went on to pen seven of the show's 30 episodes, including the first and last ones. The final episode brought in such acting big guns as Kate O'Mara, Richard Johnson and Don Henderson. As I noted before, Ray Smith made a strong impression as Vikings. Alas, he passed away at the relatively young age of 55 from a heart attack on the 15th of December 1991. Appearances in such shows as Zed Cars, Softly Softly, Callan and Special Branch proved Ray's suitability for playing the chief superintendent here. Prior to starring in Dempsey and Makepeace, the Brooklyn-born Michael Brandon was best known for appearing in Dario Argento's third horror movie, Four Flies on Grey Velvet, from 1971. Also, the music-based drama FM from 1978, and the Jacqueline Bissett vehicle Rich and Famous from 1981. It was Brandon himself who convinced the show's makers to have Dempsey B a New York cop. Originally, he was supposed to play a Californian millionaire called James Dempsey III. I, for one, am glad he talked them round. Michael even got to direct the final episode, Guardian Angel. Co-star Glynis Barber was born in Durban, South Africa. Before her part as Harriet Makepeace, she had worked on a few films, such as Norman J. Warren's Terror from 1978, the Jackie Collins scripted Yesterday's Hero from 1979, and Michael Winner's 1983 remake of The Wicked Lady. I had already been a big fan of her work, due largely to her key role as the gunslinging Sulin in the fab science fiction series Blake Seven, which ran from 1978 until 1981. The musician Alan Frederick Parker supplied the show's catchy theme tune. Most of the filming took place around the Kent area. At its height, the show was watched by around 20 million viewers in the UK. For some strange reason, it never really took off in the States. American TV did not even broadcast its final series. Dempsey and Makepeace was produced by Golden Eagle Films and London Weekend Television. Tribune Entertainment served as its distributor. These days, in the UK, it shows up on ITV4. You can also find all the episodes on YouTube. My name is Stephen Archibald, and thank you very much for listening to my spin-off podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Television Reviews. Take care, and bye-bye for now. Hi. 
Mind if we come aboard? Who are you? Police. Here, come to me, son. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, here it is. I have been appointed to well and truly serve your sovereign lady, the queen, in the office of constable. <laughs> that means you tell me what I want to know or I'll blow your head off. 